According to the CDC, 3.6 million babies were born in 2023 in the U.S. That's about 76,000 fewer than the previous year and the lowest one year tally since 1979. Joining us with the economic implications of the declining U.S. birth rate, uh, Melissa Kearney is an economics professor at the University of Maryland. Good morning to you. Um, you know, somehow every story r relates back to Elon Musk one way or another, and this is an issue that he's been talking about for quite some time, Melissa. Um, how bad is it, and, and when do we have to really start worrying about it? Yeah, well, first, thanks for having me on, Andrew. So it's actually quite likely that in the not-too-distant future, the global population is, gonna, gonna is going to decline. But in the U.S., we're facing a shrinking working-age population pretty imminently. So I think that's something that we need to be worried about. Um, you know, our working-age population has been stagnant for a while. Births in the U.S. have been falling persistently and precipitously since 2007, and I don't see any reason to think they're going to turn around. If you were going to do something about that, what would it be? So unfortunately, the lesson we can learn from other high-income countries that have been expressly experimenting with pronatalist policies really reveals that economic tinkering, some tax credits here or there, extended parental leave, that's not going to do it. So I think if what we want to do is to you know, hold steady birth rates, even at the, at the low level they are, or turn them around to increase them, it's going to take a real big investment in families in this country, a lot more support, financial support, things that make it easier for parents to combine having kids and working, really a dramatic reorientation of society toward a more family-friendly society. Short of that, we have to think about how to... I mean, we've been, we've been going our, the last 100 years the other direction, though. So do you think there's a political... Is it a... So it would have to be a political will almost. Is it, what would be a good country to take to, to look at as an example of, some, of, of a country that's turned this the right direction? Yeah, so this is actually a really interesting point. I think this is why this major challenge has snuck up on us is because people have had in mind since the 1960s this misguided worry about overpopulation. So you're right, people have been celebrating declines in birth rates, and now all of a sudden we're starting to realize that that's actually going to be really bad for our fiscal situation and our economic dynamism. You know, people, who's turned it around? Japan has managed to stall the decline in birth rates. It's still, ex you know, birth rates in Japan are still so low that they're far below replacement level. I suppose they haven't fallen out quite as far as South Korea. They've spent four times as much in terms of sharing their GDP on pro-family policies in recent decades. France has managed to throw a lot of support at this problem and, again, stalled out their fertility decline, but still far below replacement level. I can't really point to an advanced economy that has turned around declining fertility rates. That's the issue here. So I think what we have to think about is if we're facing an aging population, a shrinking age working population, how do we invest in a talent pipeline when there are just simply fewer workers around? That's going to take a Alyssa. big investment in human capital. Hey, I, I just wonder what those moves are that companies do or that countries do that you think are successful. I mean, when you think of Japan as the example to this, they're doing more and more to try and get women in the workforce. It's hard to boost your birth rate at the same time you're trying to get women to come into the workforce, especially in a workforce where there aren't enough days off. There's a very serious long day that goes along with that. What, what are countries doing that helps? Is it spending more on child care so that women can work and have kids? Is it doing more to pay people to stay home? I mean, it's, it's a complicated question. And when you push on lev one lever, you inevitably wind up with a problem on the other side. Yeah, let me be clear. I don't think there's any country we can point to that's been particularly successful at this. So what have countries tried doing? Much more ex extended paid leaves in the U.S. has, really generous child supports. If we look at Scandinavia, though, women there are still having below two kids on average. And so even the most generous countries in terms of the kind of supports they give parents and working parents are faced with below replacement level fertility. The issue of women working is really interesting. A majority of women work now across advanced economies, about 80 percent. So we shouldn't really think about um, women either having and raising kids or working. And I think the right way to think about any sort of pronatalist policy is things that make it easier for parents to combine work and having kids. Is there any economy that you know of that's had this trend line go in the wrong direction the way it seems to be going 
and has somehow done better on the other end of it, meaning, meaning that, they've, that the economy has succeeded despite the, the, uh, the, the, the clear lesser number of, 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 of people. Yeah, I think the decline in population is really unprecedented in modern history. And so we're really in uncharted waters here, facing a decline, an imminent decline in our population. We've been dealing with aging for a long time, but that's going to get even more extreme. Uh, and so, again, this is why this is such a big challenge. And as you said, I think it snuck up on people because people were, you know, had this misguided idea that we should be worried about overpopulation. So we don't have an example of an advanced economy whose working age population shrunk, and yet they maintained great economic dynamism. This is why I see this as a real major economic challenge that we need to be paying attention to. And to get back to your point at the beginning, Elon Musk has been on this topic, I think rightly so.